I think a thousand times since you've said it, and mm-hmm. I'm like trying to impersonate your cadence when I say it. I'm like, and one of my veterinarians, she came up to me and she's like, oh my goodness, Cody, I thought I was introverted, but I realized I'm just depressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's true. <laughs> uh, well, but was I, I think maybe I was, though. like in some ways I feel like I probably was um, definitely more, I probably have been dep- like depressed to some degree at a lower level. Like I have actually clinically been depressed before. Mm. Um, so I haven't been that degree of depressed, but I think I've definitely been so stressed and depressed and oppressed for probably the last eight years, like being in school, like this constant feeling of like, you're never enough, you mm-hmm. don't, you're never gonna, you know, like feeling first year and having to redo that and like, like having issues with previous mentors turn the other things, like just like my history has been very like, up and down so I think in some ways like this is like the first time I've ever been able to like just relax right and like be who I am so I think yeah it I think it's true though (laughs) that's what's happened is that like I've never and even like my husband like he came in um to like just meet some people and stuff like oh you know what he said when we left he was like wow you are so lucky that you work with such nice people and I was like, oh my goodness, because like, it's not that he doesn't work with nice people. It's just that I think like what, one of the things he mentioned, like as soon as you came in, everybody came around and wanted to talk to you. And he's right. like, how nice is that? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, it's weird. It's actually really nice <laughs> <laughs> because like, even in school, like you get into clicks and like at work, right. you like, especially like if you're like one of the only vets in the practice on a day of a really busy practice, like where I was before. Um, you don't physically have time to like sit down and talk to anybody or like have any kind of conversation or banter because yeah. it's all like rush, go, go, go. So I think, yeah, it's just very different. Like, and I would never just like go into a place I worked before and just like go and say hi to the people I worked with. Like weird, right. you know? So <sighs> even yeah. in, I think it's like the perfect also size and not that like, there's other clinics the same size, so that's not the only factor. But I was just thinking, when you were saying that, I was thinking about like vet school. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say you were at happy hour and there was, like you had him at happy hour. You're right, there would be those clicks that only like your close friends would come up and like try yeah. to like, get to know your spouse, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas the other ones kind of just stay in the periphery, yeah. which I think does happen in lots of clinics. Like a, in, a significant other shows up and there's like, just like this weirdness. people like, oh. disappear in the background. Yeah, they're like, who's that person? <laughs> yeah, no, that, I mean, it does help that like, I guess we came in and like had to like do something. So I had to like, <laughs> to take him on a tour, but uh, it- Well, I yeah. just gave Kennedy's husband a tour this morning. That's like my jam. It is, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew, I know where you shine. And right, yeah, this. tour guide, floor cleaner. Yeah, jam. <laughs> support. Locum veterinarian. <laughs> yeah, fill in mm-hmm. if someone's not around, it's great. Mm-hmm. What, um, so that, that's the reason why I think, I think we covered like why you, you left, but like there's a million clinics in the world. So why Mm -hmm. Fen, right? Yeah, I think Fen was more about, um, well, when I think like the first interaction where you like, um, sent me all of the videos of the pathology that you're doing and like what the lungs look like and like what Haemophilus. So that was Homophilus? back in vet school. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Homophilus? Ooh, just... oh, oh, that's the old term. Histophilus. Histophilus <laughs> somni. Ooh. Anyway. The old timers call it homophilus. Okay. Um, well, I remember like you had sent that and then I think that that sentiment kind of um, followed you whenever I talked to you or like watched anything because I always envisioned this like very kind person who um, like genuinely cared about vet students. So. I thought like, oh, you're opening a clinic, like why would you not want to work for somebody who is that caring? Mm -hmm. So, and I think that that's the biggest thing that I really have figured out from like the multiple different variations of bosses that I've had is that there's a huge difference between somebody who just wants to take care of you so that you make money versus somebody who like genuinely cares about you as a person. And I've had a couple of bosses that did genuinely care about me as a person and those are people that you will you'll do anything for them right Mm -hmm. because like if you really truly feel like you're cared for there's a big difference in in how you come to work in every aspect agreed Mm -hmm. 
So that was the major reason because you owned it, <laughs> but because of the thoughts uh, or the the um, how you talked a lot about clinic culture. And I'll be honest, like there was a bit of me that was like, "Ooh, is this real?" Mm -hmm. Because I, I could show you. I mean, I wouldn't, but I have emails of promises from other people about what they wanted for clinic culture and um, an environment, and then. You turn around and you see the absolute opposite mm -hmm. of what they promised. Literally, completely opposite. So that was a big fear. And some of the warnings that I got from some of my friends even said, like, be careful just because um, he's got this great online presence and he was nice to you one time and then helped you when you um, were graduating and got you set up with a plan for what to ask for when you're going to clinics and where to go. Like, just because he did all that, like, don't, you don't, yeah. you know, don't just trust him. Um, really, like, talk to other people. And I didn't actually talk to other people because I just kind of thought, like, I don't know, I just had like a gut feeling that it would be good. And if it wasn't, the other thing was like, if it isn't, like, oh well, and then right. Alberta, I'll just go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, the TikTok I made, imagine if it's better. <laughs> it's about Finn. <laughs> uh, imagine if it turns out better than you could have ever imagined. And I think that that's kind of like been my motto for the last, like probably, yeah, at least for the last year, like it could be so much better than you ever imagined, not worse. Right. Um, so that kind of resonated too with me when I talked about like, how do I quit? <laughs> it's never going to be as bad as you think it is, yeah. right? Um, and even if it is, I mean, this is not all things, but even if it is, it's going to be okay, right? Like, yeah. it's not when we leave somewhere, have a difficult conversation coming up in any aspect of our life, the like lead up is always a thousand times worse than the actual conversation because yeah. our brains go through the worst of the worst scenarios yes. a million times so you have to relive through all of that mm -hmm. so by the time you actually get to a hard conversation it doesn't matter at all yeah they're always a thousand times easier than you expected yeah that's very true like it sucks but no it yeah it does but it so yeah that and that's more or less been like the the thing that I've thought about is like, what if it is better than anything you ever could have imagined? And it really is. Well, and that's why I love doing the working interviews to give you an opportunity to mm -hmm. see the whole thing in action. Cause when there's like two people like doing an interview, mm -hmm. you can fake, fake anything, right? Yep. It's like on both sides, you can mm -hmm. just be like, yeah, or like I could have just said, our culture's great. Like, yep. look how happy I am, right? right. Mm -hmm. But like, it's pretty hard to get 19 people to fake in a clinic environment yeah. for three hours. Yep, that's really true. Three, it was like five or six. <laughs> I don't know, I, like I always come early and leave late, so I'm like, I don't know what you want from me. Um, so I came, you're like, yeah, come whatever time. I think I came at nine. <laughs> and then the day you're like, you can go. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, and I think that was a huge part of it too, like the working interview, like I'd never ever been on one before. So like the working interview, like being able to talk to other people that were in the mm -hmm. clinic, like talking to Stacy was really nice. I really like, I don't know, like something about just like this small interactions, you got to see like a very small portion of like their personalities. And like, mm -hmm. there are things about every single person that I talked to that I was like, oh, I really like that. I really like that. I really like that. Yeah. Like Jody, how she was so supportive in surgery. Um, Stacy, how she was so calm and collected during dentistry that day. Um, Cherish was like on her feet, like running around. I remember thinking like, that's insane. Like she's just like everywhere all, all at the same time. And then when I started and we had the same birthday, I was like, oh, it's just <laughs> like destiny. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, but yeah, she was like the first tech, tech I worked with when I started. So that was kind of like, that was amazing. But there were just so many things about everybody. Like Brie was so much more personable mm -hmm. than I could have ever imagined. Face um, FaceTiming you. Yes. Before you were in an employee yeah. A fan. yeah when i was in the shower that was weird okay okay nobody she actually did okay today she she facetimed me and i hi what's up okay yeah. i'm coming i'll be right there okay can you tpr it did you hear me 
Bree, Bree FaceTimed me this morning. Bree's not in today. Uh-huh. Bree FaceTimed this morning me, and then I didn't answer, and then like three minutes later, I FaceTimed her, and I was like thinking that it was weird, so I was sure that she was in the bathroom. Uh-huh. So then like five minutes later, she FaceTimed me back, so I ran from the treatment room to the bathroom and sat on the toilet with my pants on oh, and answered the man. FaceTime from the toilet just like, to make her laugh. Like this is how devoted I am. Right? Oh. Like just, oh man. Just making, making her day. Uh, last question, she, last, okay, last question. How do you like Calgary? How do you like Alberta? How do you it. like living in Calgary, Alberta? I love it. I went to um, Horseshoe Canyon on the weekend. Um, I went to Banff on the weekend. I went to Cannes. Wow, you went weekend. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, we went to Calgary, we shopped. We went to the Lowe's and we saw Nicole's husband, Jeffrey, whose yeah. name I couldn't remember at the time, but I remember it now. <laughs> Purposely just to see him? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's close. We have got home uh, decorating stuff or whatever, a vanity for the bathroom. So you're enjoying Calgary? Love it so it's, much. It's a good place to live. It is, yeah. For those outdoorsy, mm-hmm. adventurous types. Me. Me. You mm-hmm. do? Yeah. Otherwise, I'd live in Beaver Lodge, Alberta. Mm. I love Calgary. It's great. Yeah, I love it too. It's really good. The plains and the. Hoodoos mountains. and the mountains and the hoodoos. Yeah, isn't that what they call the thing hoodoos. in Drumheller? They yeah. call them hoodoos. <laughs> <laughs> They're hoodoos. <laughs> did you call? You call them hoodoos? I heard it. No hoodoos. <laughs> did you call the hoodoos? Okay, your point was Okay, I'm gotta work. Until next time mm-hmm. on episode two of the Cheryl and Cody podcast. It's episode Stay two. Stay tuned. Where's one? This is. This is basically like a pod, mini podcast. Oh, stay tuned for episode two. Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, it's just a joke. <laughs> or it could be. It was one. It's we'll talk fun. about doo-doos and hoo-hoos. <laughs>